All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Tokamak Industries mod, which was originally made back in the day by forum user Tokamak. It has since, though, been taken over by who else but Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a number of different parts which have been, uh, shall we say, scavenged from previously made mod packs that have since become abandoned. And I have to admit, I originally wasn't going to make a video about this mod because some of the parts we've already looked at in previous mod videos. And I, I tend to not like to go back to things we've already looked at. I like seeing new stuff. But because of the fact that this mod has refurbished these parts to some degree, and there are additional parts from mods that I never got a chance to look at back in those days, I figured, what the heck, let's take a look at it anyways. And so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all this does add in. So let's grab a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison sake, and then head to our janitor's closet mod filter to turn off all the squad parts and have a look at our first part, the Inflato Flat Command Module, which is an inflatable command pod, which does require at least one crew member to operate, but can hold up to four. It also does come equipped with three different docking nodes for your convenience, a crew report as per usual, and 150 electric charge. And if we grab this thing, you can see that in its deflated state, it, it does fit the 2.5 meter size variety and if we look over here to crew you'll notice that there's no slot for this part uh, we only have the parts for the crew members for the mark 1-2 and that is because this part as well as the several other inflatable parts in this mod pack well they're of course meant to be deployed once you get them to their final destination. So you're meant to actually bring crew along with you in another part to then transfer in to these inflatable parts. So if you don't see crew that you can pop into it from here, don't worry, that's not a glitch. You just have to transfer crew out in the world. But once you do have this thing inflated, it's a pretty nice little thing with a lovely interior, a good little popped out uh, bit there for for the crew to go in and out of the hatch, and like I did mention, three very useful docking ports. A very, very nice flat command pod. Now the next command pod we have, which is not so flat, is the TMA-1 Orbital Orb, which is sort of a Soyuz-inspired command pod here. It does fit two Kerbals maximum, one of course minimum. It does have a built-in SAS, the typical crew report, 200 electric charge, and 50 monopropellant as well as, of course, an internal view. Very nice, very lovely. Now, we have nothing in the fuel engines or command categories, but in structural, we do have a couple of parts which are meant for the Moonox, uh, which is a larger part down here in utility. But what the heck, let's take care of these adapters now, as I actually really love these parts. They're very cool, radially attachable adapters that we can place there, and as you can see, it has has a multitude of different attachment points for your convenience to build off whatever you'd like. And we have three different ones here, the flat version, which is this. We then have a parallel version, which has a nice 1.25 meter size ring for you to then build up and down from that. And then a perpendicular version for you to build, well, perpendicularly to your ship. And I love these things and feel that I'm probably going to use this perpendicular attachment point for a lot of space stations as I can only, you know, come up with a handful of ideas just within a few seconds of how I could use that for space stations. It just gives you a lot more options for building off in different directions, which is always cool. Now, the next parts we have are down here in aerodynamics. Well, let's just double check that. Yes, aerodynamics. And, um... 
Yeah, I don't know why they're in aerodynamics, because they're heat shields, the K-Dept heat shields. So you'd think they'd be down here in thermal, but no, no, they're in aerodynamic. And again, we have three different sizes of these things, being a large, a medium, and of course a small K-Dept heat shield. And these things are quite nice, because in their, you know, folded up state, they'll still protect quite nicely whatever is, you know, above them, but when expanded, will give you a lot more protection from outside of the typical base of your rocket. So, for instance, the uh, flat command pod here would get a little bit more protection than it normally would when this thing is retracted, because these side bits would be exposed to all that horrible, horrible, deadly heat. But now, bam, expanded and protected. And of course, the uh, two smaller sizes work the same way, expanding out to give you a bit more heat protection. Always a good thing. And yeah, they're lovely ablators with separators, so you can pop them off whenever you need. And really, really should be down here. But oh well, what are you gonna do? And let's pop these things off and head all the way down to utility because well, yeah, we got nothing in any of these categories, so bam, utility for the final six parts. The first of which being the Dry Workshop, which, according to the description, is basically just a fuel tank that they converted into a space station. Yeah, good idea, good times on that one. And also kind of looks like a robot face there. I love it. And yes, it can hold eight crew members in total, does have a science experiment crew report, and uh, yeah, has a very lovely interior. I really do like this thing. Now, our next part here is another inflatable one, a inflato habitat, which can hold up to six crew members once it is inflated and they've been transferred over. So let's deploy that. There we go. Now we have a lovely hatch up there for them to get in and out of the thing. and of course, a good window on either side there and there. And yes, it holds, like I said, six kerbals. Now, if we go up north here, we can actually go to the next Inflato, which is an Inflato workshop, which also does hold six kerbals. And again, deployable. There we go. Just differing interior views and fun times had for all. Now, the next part we have is the Munox, which, of course, go along with these little uh, side pieces here. And this is a very cool thing. I really do like it because it's, uh, you know, it could be used as a part in a space station. It could be used, as you can see here, with this front window as some sort of interesting lander or rover. And it does hold eight crew members. It is a command pod with a minimum of one. It does have a crew report to 500 electric charge and 100 mono propellant and a lot of attachment points on the outside. Now, what's quite nifty about these and why these go so well with this up here, besides the fact they were made for each other, is you'll notice, if I actually kind of just uh, pull this out like that there, you can see that the bit that radially attaches actually is kind of angled inwards, and that's because they fit over these. So if I actually flip this baby back around, there we go. They fit right over each of these little attachment point bits so that you can put them right on there, fit nice and snugly, and then you can build off however you'd like. Though I do love the fact that these can also be attached radially. You don't have to have these bits there, but it is handy nonetheless. And then the next part we have is, of course, one of my favorite parts, and that is the small centrifugal habitat, which holds one crew member and is another inflatable deployable, which spins. And as you can see, it's starting up and starting to spin faster and sp faster to get up to roughly a third of a G. And I love this thing. Now, it is actually meant to have an interior, but apparently the interior was not up to par for uh, either Linux Guru Gamer or Tokamak. So it's currently been taken out, but is being worked on to get a new one, which is very cool. Hopefully we'll get that soon. And the final part is a low profile base mount, which, um, flip over. Yeah, there we go. Is a lovely little mount there. Excellent. It, yeah, you, you'd land with it. <laughs> That's really all it is to it. Of course, it is made to work alongside one of these inflatable bits, probably most likely the uh, inflatable command module there. But yeah, you can just 
throw it on the bottom of things, and it's it's a lovely little lander with built-in legs, which is always useful. There we are. And that is all of the parts for the Tokamak Industries mod. So let's actually take a look at uh, the interiors for these things with a ship that I did create earlier that is a monstrosity of just all the parts, more or less. And uh, yeah, let's head out to the launch pad with this. And hopefully all will go well. Now the other bits, yes, I already inflated them, so we don't have to worry about that. So let... Oh, I forgot to grab more Kerbals. Okay, back to the back to the vehicle assembly building. I knew I was forgetting something. Phil, there we go. Lovely. Now back out to the launch pad. Now that we've fixed that issue. I was about to say, that didn't look like enough Kerbals down there. All right, so the first uh, couple of Kerbals should be right here in the orbital orb. So let's view them in there. A lovely interior to the place. You can see the, uh, the spinning section out there. Hair always nice. And yeah, just our two Kerbals ready to go to fly to space. And of course, our second crewman here. Now, this is inside the dry workshop. I love this thing. Very reminiscent, of course, of Skylab. And uh, apparently, they get Babylon 5 up there. Always fun. God, I love that show. Now, unfortunately, they also seem to get My Little Pony, which is just weird. But uh, yeah, there we go. We have a lovely workshop in here. Quite a few different Kerbals and different seating positions, different workstation computers, etc. So let's just cycle through these guys, and then we should come to... Ah, there we go, the Moonox. Excellent. Now, this is the, sort of the pilot commander position here with uh, a little bit of equipment here and there for flying around or most likely driving around. And then we have some nice crew members here with a lovely window. That's the good seat you really want. A crew member who doesn't get a window. Oh, poor guy. And then two people that actually have a job to do at the control panels. Lovely. And then we have downstairs in the uh, secondary section, a just, uh, or actually, no, this is still up top in the back seat with some of the containers. And then we go downstairs to these guys who are down here with the airlocks, the remaining a bit of uh, stuff and things. And apparently you're not supposed to cut or step on a disc. Good, good. And that is uh, those particular containers. So now of course, to see the internals of the other things, we have to actually start doing this transfer crew. And let's see, let's just do that and that and keep on going. <laughs> this is going to take a little bit. I'm actually probably going to fast forward through this little section because I got to transfer a lot of crew. Okay, and we are back. And uh, as you can see, we still have our crew inside of uh, this pod. And then these are the next three containers we're going to be looking at. So let's start with this Kerbal who is in the flat command module here. A lovely, large, spacious area. We've got some supplies up above, a uh, lovely desk with some coffee stains, a, uh, our seat for our other personnel here who seems to have created said stains, and then on the other side we have the two Kerbals in charge of the command, and as you can see it has the same uh, command system as the Moon Ox that we were viewing a momentarily ago or a little while ago. That, that would be a lot better way to phrase that. There we are, so all the good things. And then we are in the workshop in here, I believe. So we've got these Kerbals and these various seats. We've got the, or no, this is the habitat. This is the habitat, not the workshop. So we have the places for growing some food, including not sure stuff and just a number of good seats. There we go. And then I believe, are we in the same one or is this the workshop now? Ah, this... No, we're back to the Inflato one. Hmm. Well, somewhere in there we were in the workshop, or it is potential that potentially that they are reusing some of the current interior. Oh no, we are in the workshop right now. It just looked like the Inflato one because we were at the same desk. But no, we are in the workshop currently. That is better because I didn't see the, inf the uh, curved inflatable walls. There we are, so we do have these seats. A perfect little seating in here, very nice. Just a number of different desks. And then the downstairs bit where apparently we're growing some more things and have more fun stuff over that way. Good times indeed. 
But uh, yeah, there we go. That is all the interiors for these lovely parts. And that is it for the Tokamak Industries refurbished parts mod. I love this thing. As it is nice just having all these parts here again because some of these parts were parts that I really loved in the past and really did miss when they were no longer, you know, worked on. But now we have them back again for us to use and enjoy and hopefully build Build many fun stations with but that is going to be it for today folks I hope you all have enjoyed and oh yes the usual if you would like to check out this mod for yourself you can take a look at the link in the description as always but that is going to be it for today now so I hope you have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one